Hello, thanks for joining me again. I'll try and make a slightly shorter video this time because I'm aware my videos keep going over 20 minutes. Some of them are really cheap, some of them are slightly more expensive, and one of them I'm pretty sure you won't have heard of. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to my best vintage lenses, which are actually better on a mirrorless camera than they are on a like a rangefinder camera. Normally, I buy my lenses to use on film cameras, such as this Leica M6. On occasion, the lens doesn't work as hoped on the rangefinder, but because I use mirrorless cameras, I can use them on a different camera body, on a digital body. Stay tuned, and I'll introduce you to some really nice lenses. Most of these lenses are LTM, which means like a thread mount or like a screw mount, meaning they are rangefinder lenses, but they can be used on mirrorless cameras, whether it's a Sony full frame mirrorless camera, whether it's a like a CL APS-C crop sensor, which is what I use, or something like a micro four thirds mirrorless, such as the Limix GH5, which is recording at the moment. So that's my Leica shooter. Most of the time I'm buying lenses for my Lucky cameras to shoot film. If I can't shoot on a range finder camera, such as a Leica M6 for film or Leica M3, or for digital like a range finder, my Leica M240. Sometimes the lenses, these vintage lenses, are not calibrated to work with the the range finder in the camera. Meaning, basically, you focus the range finder in the camera. It tells you it's in focus. You check your picture, it's not in focus. That's why some lenses I'm using on mirrorless and not on a rangefinder body. So in terms of my main mirrorless camera, um, if you've seen my photos before, you probably know that I use this like a CL. Um, it's an APS-C crop sensor mirrorless camera, 1.5 crop. The amazing thing with this camera is it has the electronic viewfinder. So you can basically mount any lens and be able to focus it. And you're not relying on the fact that you need a, a calibrated rangefinder and a coupled rangefinder lens. The lenses are going to show you are rangefinder lenses. I can't use some of them on my rangefinder cameras and I'll talk about that. Are you ready? I don't know which one to start with. I'm including lens number one because it's tiny, it's cheap and it's super sharp. I do, I can use it on a rangefinder camera, so it's slightly different to some of the other ones which I'm gonna talk about, but I feel like I should include it just because it's such a, like an amazing little lens. And if you're using a small camera, such as the, like a CL or like a tiny micro four thirds camera body, I don't know, the Panasonic G9, for example, I think you appreciate much more small lenses if you have a small camera. So the reason I'm including this lens is because it is tiny, but also amazing. So this lens is the Indostar 22 50mm f3.5 lens. Now this is a Tessar lens, and generally speaking, Tessar lenses are crazy sharp, and this is no exception. This is actually a clone of a, some people say it's a clone of a Leica lens, but it's not exactly because this lens is a Tessar and the Leica lens is said to be not a Tessar. Here is my Leica lens, Leica Elmar 5cm or 50mm f3.5. This is the Indostar 22 5cm f3.5 and they are literally identical. You'll see these lenses in a future video because I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with these lenses and the cameras that they relate to. So I won't dwell on this lens too much. I just want to say if you want something really small and really sharp and give your digital sensor pictures, some kind of, some some vintage character, check on eBay because these lenses are normally under £30 if you, if you have a look. Sometimes you find them on old cameras such as a Fed or a Zorki which are Soviet rangefinder cameras. I bought mine on a Zorki. But you can get them without. One thing to note is there's one kind of warning that I can give with this lens. This is a collapsible lens. 
It's only collapsible on a rangefinder camera. It's not collapsible on a mirrorless camera. I'll show you. So as it pushes in, this will hit your sensor inside the camera. If you collapse it on the camera. So just to be aware, if you buy this lens for a mirrorless camera, don't collapse it. If you happen to be a hybrid shooter like myself, and you happen to have a, a Leica rangefinder, such as this M6, then you can collapse it. And then you really do see the true benefits because now it is super tiny. This will fit any Leica thread mount vintage rangefinder camera. It doesn't need to be a Leica. As I say, they came on the Savior Fed rangefinder cameras or Zorky rangefinder cameras. I just think it's brilliant for mirrorless just because it is so small and so light and really sharp. And it just makes, for me, boring digital sensors come alive because it's just got that interesting kind of quirks. This isn't a lens I was supposed to be talking about, so this is kind of a bonus lens. Lens number one, Indostar 22 50mm f3.5. Just to be aware, to give you some details, I may as well show you on this camera. The app, it's unusual in terms of the aperture ring is on the front of the lens. I have to turn this small inner dial on the front to change your aperture. Focus scale is normal, but there's no, normally you often see an aperture ring on the outside of the lens. This is quite unusual where it's on the inside. Some people like that, some people don't. The other thing to note is the filter thread is on the inside, so the filters for this are crazy small, like 20 something, I think, less than 30 millimeters. It's basically the diameter of that inner silver ring. I've not used it with filters. Old lenses can flare more easily if pointed into the sun, so you can get a vintage lens hood to go on top to cut down the flare or to shoot it away from the sun. Low contrast images are nice for black and white photography. It also gives kind of nice pastely shades as well. Lens number one. Okay, I'm trying to keep the best till last. Okay, this lens is a quirky lens. I'm including this lens in this video to say you can use it on a mirrorless camera but I also use it on rangefinder cameras. Let me explain. This is the, again, super cheap, super light, made of aluminium. It literally weighs nothing. It's probably one of my lightest lenses of all the lenses I own. Really small. And the, again, the same as the last lens, the aperture ring is on the inside of the lens. And you have to push the kind of the black front and twist which is a bit unusual. This is a Orion 15 28 millimeter F6 lens. Now you might wonder to yourself, what use is an F6 lens? I'd probably say the same, but there is a but. This lens just makes amazing pictures because it's not amazing, if that makes sense. The more I do my photography, the more I realize perfect is overrated. I saw images from this on Flickr when researching wide lenses and instantly I just saw, like, I don't know, 10 photos and I was like, I need this lens and they're cheap. So this is a Soviet lens, again, like a thread mount, the same as the first lens or like a screw mount, L39. Super, super small. Again, I'm including it in this video relating to mirrorless. One, because it's small, and so it suits small, small form cameras. And number two, if you like the kind of quirks of something like a Holger camera or a Fuji Instax or a Polaroid, they're nice because they're not perfect. If you put this lens onto your camera, especially more so for full frame cameras than for crop sensor cameras. So I'd say probably like your Sony's, things like this. It's not sharp and it vignettes really heavily. So it kind of gives a vintage look straight away. And because it's F6, you can pretty much point and shoot. It's hyperfocal distance like, like a lens is. So basically you dial in five meters. At F6, pretty much everything's good everything will be in focus. 
so I shoot it wide open all the time. Roughly gauge the distance and just take my pictures. I've used this a lot on film cameras because of its size and because I love the weight. So when I'm running, if I want a light weight 28mm small lens to make a landscape scene, a boring, a non-pretty landscape scene more visually appealing, I'll take this lens. So if you're getting bored with your digital sensor and everything just looks like it looks exactly the same as what you see. In my eyes that's boring because you need to make photos depending on what your job is and what your interest is. But for me, if I'm trying to be creative, I'd like a lens to make a scene better than reality or more interesting than reality. This lens will make your scene more interesting than reality because it's not perfect. It is a glass lens, glass and obviously metal, but it's a bit like shooting with a plastic lens in terms of it's not perfect. I'll include images shot on film and you, if you look, pay special attention to the vignetting, I'd say that's the main feature of this lens. Slightly soft and it vignettes. So lens number two, probably my lightest lens and an amazing 28mm, the Orion 15 28mm f6 LTM lens. These are two lenses which I'm happy to use on rangefinder cameras and mirrorless. So the next two lenses are going to be mirrorless only for me. Okay, this lens you should have heard of, especially if you like portraits and if you like fast lenses. Recognize this. So this is the Jupiter 3. This is a 50mm f1.5 Zeiss Sonar clone. Sonar lenses have a certain look. People that like vintage lenses often go after the Sonar design lenses. They make really pleasing kind of arty looking pictures. This lens again is aluminium and obviously glass lens, glass elements. Like a screw mount or like a thread mount, aluminium Soviet lens. I bought this as one of my first Leica lenses because it was cheap. The reason I use this on mirrorless and I didn't use it for maybe the first five years of owning it is because this lens is not calibrated to work on a Leica rangefinder camera. Some Soviet lenses don't work on a Leica camera because the flange distance, the kind of the fake, the distance between the lens and the sensor is different on some old Russian cameras compared to Leica cameras. So it would have worked on a Russian range from the body, for example, or should have, but it doesn't work on my Leica range from the bodies, so I can't use it on my M6. So I had this lens kind of collecting dust, and then along comes my Leica CR, which I bought as my backup digital camera to my Leica M240. Because mirrorless cameras have electronic viewfinders this means I can now focus and this lens exceeded all expectations and what's even more crazy my Leica CL is the main camera for digital my main camera for video is the Lumix GH5 sometimes for fun I'll use a Lumix GH5 for photos as well and one, on one of my recent trips to Poland I tested various vintage lenses on the Lumix for portraits and I was amazed at how good the images were. This lens works really well on the Micro Four Thirds Panasonic. So this lens will also be really good on something like a Sony mirrorless full frame. I'll include some sample images shot with the Lumix GH5 and the Leica CL using the Jupiter 3 Sonar 50mm f1.5. These lenses have become quite fashionable in recent years, so the price is probably higher than 
some of the others I'm going to show you today. At a guess, I'd say maybe 100 to 200 pounds. So this lens, I prefer a mirrorless than a rangefinder. And I only have two lenses like that. So lens number three, the Jupiter 3 50mm f1.5. Okay, this lens, I was so happy to find. This lens seems seemingly unknown and I only found it by digging deep into the archives of internet photography forums from the maybe early 2000s. I was trying to find the best LTM lenses for my Leica rangefinder cameras. I wanted small, fast 50mm lenses for my portraiture. In my hunt for LTM lenses for my Leica rangefinder cameras, I discovered the Canon LTM lenses. I've already done a video on those and you can see it here. During my research, I found this. Here's the Jupiter 3, here's the next lens. They're roughly the same size, but this is maybe two times heavier than this. This is very light, reasonably light, not as light as this. This is solid. I'm not sure what it's made of. It doesn't look like chrome unless it's coated, but it's heavy. You can tell it's got a lot of glass and metal in this lens. Lens number four is a Nikkor HC 50mm f2 or 5cm f2. The full name is Nippon. I'm not going to pronounce this. It says Nippon on the front. It's Nikkor H.C. 5 centimeter Nippon. Most vintage rangefinder lenses, such as all the ones I've talked about so far, focus from one meter to infinity. That's the design of the lenses when they were being manufactured for the rangefinder cameras of the 1950s, roughly period. So they're all designed to work from three feet to infinity. If you saw my video, why is the Nikon FE2 better than the Leica M6. The reason I was saying the Nikon was better is because one of the reasons is it focused, the lenses focus closer than a Leica rangefinder lens. So one downside I found for, for buying all these vintage Leica LTM lenses to use on my Leica cameras is the only focus is closer to one meter which is even less than the modern Leica lenses, which focus at 0.7 meters. So I'm like, that's even worse. <laughs> so I'm kind of going backwards. So yes, I'm finding really beautiful, really small, very good value lenses, but nearly all of them focus at one meter, which is less than ideal for myself, wanting to get closer for portraits. Obviously the closer you get, the more pleasing the background because the background becomes more out of focus. As you bring the lens closer to the subject, the background goes more out of focus. And so I don't know of any other lens like this in the rangefinder world. If you do, please um, write to me in the comments below if you know of a lens that's as good as this lens in terms of it has a dual feature. So this lens is really special and I was really glad to find it. I bought this lens for one reason. I bought this lens, I already had 50 mil lenses for my Leica rangefinder cameras. So I didn't really need any more 50 mil LTM lenses. I bought this lens to shoot digital. Specifically, I bought this lens to shoot on Leica mirrorless cameras, but you could use it on a Sony mirrorless or Micro Four Thirds. Why did I buy this lens to use on mirrorless? because it focuses to 0.5 meters, but not with a rangefinder. It has aperture clicks. Just going back to the Jupiter 3 50mm, no aperture clicks. The two 50mm lenses I've already spoke about, these focus from three feet or one meter to infinity. It's nice, but it's not ideal for portraits. This lens on a vintage 
rangefinder camera or even a like M camera will focus from three feet or one meter to infinity. But if you put it on a mirrorless camera, you can focus from 0.5 meters to infinity. So you're half as close again. So for portraits, it's amazing. It's my closest focusing rangefinder lens from any manufacturer without using a special adapter. Yes, you can use close focus adapters on Leica lenses. You can see my macro slash close focus adapters video with Leica cameras. But generally speaking, if you're not using some kind of close focus adapter, this, as far as I know, is the only lens which focuses at 0.5 meters and is made for rangefinders. That's amazing. I was really happy to find this. Because it focuses closer on a mirrorless camera, this is my go-to 50mm lens on the Leica CL body for portraits because I can get that much closer. It gives me the beautiful bokeh in the background. The great thing is if I then want to shoot some images with it on the any of my Leica M cameras, I can do, I can use this lens on my M cameras. The only difference being it only focuses to from one meter on the M body or any rangefinder camera. The Nikkor HC 5cm f2. Particularly useful for mirrorless cameras because it will focus at 0.5 meters. Okay, two lenses left. My next lens is more of a warning than great for mirrorless. I just want to try and save you some money. If you look online for a 35mm lens, a cheap 35mm lens for your like a rangefinder camera, one lens you'll often find on eBay mentioned is a Jupiter 12. This is a 35mm f2.8. Soviet lens. If you're seeing this lens online and it's advertised for Leica and you happen to like using Leica lenses on your Sony, you may buy this lens to use on your mirrorless camera. Now I'm only including this lens as a warning to stop you buying this lens. Yes, it's a nice lens and it works great on a rangefinder camera, but it won't it will not fit your mirrorless camera, and there is a reason. Look how big the back is. If you try and mount that on a mirrorless camera, this is going to hit your sensor. The rear element of the lens will hit your sensor. So don't buy the Jupiter 12 35mm f2.8 lens if you're buying for a mirrorless camera. Just wanted to include that as a, as a warning, might save a few people. So you may ask, how do I fit these rangefinder lenses onto my mirrorless camera? If I'm using it on a, like a CL, I use a M39 to like an M out adapter. I can include a link in the description below onto a like an M to like an L adapter and then the lens. So this is a like a adapter to, to mount like a lens like a M lenses onto a like a CL mirrorless camera rather than using native like a CL lenses. With the addition of this adapter I can then use the screw mount lenses like so. So that's how I attach these lenses to a like a CL camera. If I want to attach the lenses to my Lumix GH5 I use a L39 to M39 adapter. Again, I can include a link in the description. One problem to mention with micro four thirds cameras and vintage rangefinder lenses is a lot of the time the lenses that you see aren't cheap on eBay are often 50 mil lenses. Now 50 mil lens on a two times crop sensor body is gonna now become a 100 mil lens. So that's it, my five best 
vintage lenses for mirrorless cameras. Indostar 22 50mm f3.5, Orion 15 28mm f6, the Jupiter 3. Really beautiful bokeh and amazing for portraits. And number four, the Nikkor HC 5cm f2 lens. And then just an honorary mention to the cheap and cheerful Nikon E series lenses. The Viltrox Speed Booster. I hope you found that useful and see you in the next one.